Hi, Mana family. You know, every two years, Congress typically passes between four and six million words of new legal legislation. And that's just the federal government, not even including state governments. Who determines what laws are correct or incorrect? Generally speaking, in democratic societies, majority rules. In less than democratic societies, he who has the gold and the guns makes the rules. In most countries, absolute standards of right or wrong are generally set for that country by the highest court of the land. Ultimately, though, the power and value of any law depends on the law giver. Human lawmakers are fallible, and many laws have to be repealed when they find out that they're fallible and flawed. God gave us the Ten Commandments to reveal his absolute and unchanging standard of right and wrong, and they will never have to be repealed. God gave us his law to show us our sin and to reveal our need for a Savior. The Ten Commandments are like the mirror in your bathroom. You know, when we look at the mirror, the mirror shows you that you need to wash your hair, uh, comb your, fa comb your uh, hair, wash your face, brush your teeth, but your mirror won't wash your face, brush your teeth, or comb your hair. The mirror reveals the problem. It doesn't fix the problem. The central human problem is that we are separated from holy God because of our sin. Most people mistakenly believe that God will let them into heaven because they're a good person. They believe that God grades on the curve, and of course, they're above average. The Bible says that God's standard is 100% moral perfection. If you have broken even one of God's laws in your entire life, you fail God's entrance exam into heaven. God didn't give us the Ten Commandments so that we could get into heaven by keeping them perfectly, because no one except Jesus has been able to keep them perfectly. Bill Williams once said, The law is the light that reveals how dirty the room is. It's not the broom that sweeps it clean. So God's law shows us our sin problem. God himself provided the solution by sending his son Jesus, who kept God's law perfectly and died in our place to pay the penalty for our sin. The Ten Commandments were given by God to the children of Israel at Mount Sinai in 1400 B.C., about 1440 B.C., three months after their exodus from Egypt. They have been the foundation of Christian and Jewish moral and legal law ever since. The Ten Commandments are usually divided into two tables. The first four laws have to do with our vertical relationship with God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second six laws have to do with our horizontal relationship with people. If the vertical law, if the vertical relationship with God is right, the horizontal relationship with people will also be right. Contrary to popular belief, the Ten Commandments were given to humans to give them a great deal of freedom. There are only ten, not thousands. Two commandments tell us to do something. Eight commands tell us not to do something. See, God loves us enough to say no when it would keep us safe, if there's something that would harm us. As parents, we've all told our children no in order to keep them safe. A negative law actually gives us far more freedom than a positive law. If you tell your child, don't play in the street, they in fact can play everywhere else. Someone has said, we're not saved by the Ten Commandments, but we are kept safe by the Ten Commandments. The law is like guardrails on a bridge or a freeway overpass. It keeps us safe from dangers on the road as we journey through life. God gave us the Ten Commandments because he loves us and he wants the best for us. Remember, God designed us to do life together.